what, what it is. is. Welcome to the Death Cage. I'm here this evening with K-Bob. Hi. And this is a gratuitous visual effects shot. Yes, it is. So, to get this out of the way, K-Bob is going to go on his way. He's made his appearance. He's done for the evening. K-Bob? You keep talking, but all I hear is Easter Bunny, Easter Bunny, Easter Bunny. Would you get out of here? All right, I'm going. All right, now that he's gone, let's get on to the vlog. So tonight we're working on what I like to call the x -plier. Here it is. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with this guitar, you can check it out over on my blog. That's facebook.com slash crack guitars. That's where I keep all my vlog entries for everything that I'm building. Basically, paint is done. Clear coat, I think, is done. And it's time to wet sand. So before I wet sand, I went in and I cleaned all the gunk out of the holes. So I opened up all of the holes where all the switches come through and then where all the plates go on the back. I went in with my Dremel and kind of cut away the extra clear coat that kind of rolled over the edges. And that way, if I scratch the finish, it'll be cleaned up as I polish it. Now, when it comes to the clear coat, the clear coat on this guitar is actually pretty thick. And the reason being is, I had my wife, she went in and painted this beautiful, beautiful vine design that matches the neck of the guitar. It has a vine inlay on it. And there, that's the Crack Guitars logo on the headstock, which I love. And yes, the pedals do glow in the dark, but this camera isn't good enough in the dark to actually see it. So I had her paint this, and the paint she uses is a very thick acrylic. So it ends up being about a millimeter or more thick in some places. So in order to level the finish after I put the clear coat on, you have to put quite a bit of clear coat on. I put upwards of 10 layers of clear coat that I apply with a brush. This is not sprayed on, this is brushed on. So it's a little bit thicker. So when you come back into wet sand after you finish your clear coat, you have to have enough clear that you can level the surface all the way across and not cut into that paint. And I'll put some graphics up on screen. So say this is the surface of the guitar. This is the body, okay? The paint sets on top of the body like this. The clear coat, when you apply it, tends to follow the contour of the body, so it looks like that. You have to add enough clear that when you come back and wet sand, you can wet sand it smooth without having any divots. If you have a divot, you're not going to have that mirror finish that everyone wants in their guitar. But if you don't have enough clear, you'll end up cutting through the paint before you get the clear level. So you have to add enough clear that you can level the entire surface and still have a little bit of clear over your paint. If you cut into your paint, you're going to ruin the paint and you're not going to have any clear coat on top to protect it. That's why it's taken me a couple weeks putting a coat on per day. I apply a coat, I let it dry completely, I come back in, I sand it. I do a light sanding, I use 320 sandpaper and then I would apply the next coat and so on and so forth. And then once it started getting a little thicker, I would come in and actually sand it a little more and try to get it smoother so that I wouldn't have to do so much wet sanding. As you can see, it's actually got a really nice mirror finish as it is on the back there. So now it's time to wet sand, which is a process I hate. Hope to have it done before too long and you'll be seeing this in my videos. That being said, you won't be seeing this in any of my green screen videos for obvious reasons. I kind of realized that after I painted the guitar, I thought, I cannot use this in any green screen video. So anyway, that's my vlog entry for this evening. Have a good one, and solidarity.